Macmillan Audio presents How Not to Diet, the groundbreaking science of healthy, permanent weight loss by me, Dr. Michael Greger, read for you by me, the author. This book is dedicated to my mom, the source of everything good in my life. I love you, Mom. Let's start with the preface. Down the rabbit hole. Surely, if there was a safe, simple, side-effect-free solution to obesity, we would know about it by now, right? I'm not so sure. It takes an estimated average of 17 years before evidence from scientific research is incorporated into day-to-day -day clinical practice. Uh, one example that was particularly poignant for my family, heart disease. Decades ago, Dr. Dean Ornish and colleagues published evidence in one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world that our leading cause of death could be reversed. With diet and lifestyle changes alone, yet this monumental discovery was effectively ignored at the time. Even now, hundreds of thousands of Americans continue to perish every year from what we learned nearly 30 years ago is an arrestable, reversible condition. In fact, I had seen such a reversal with my own eyes. My dear grandmother was cured of her end-stage heart disease by one of Ornish's contemporaries, Nathan Pritikin, using similar methods. She was 65 when she was given her medical death sentence, but thanks to a healthy diet, was able to live another 31 years till age 96 to continue to enjoy her six grandkids, including me. If effectively the cure to the number one killer of men and women could be ignored and get lost down some rabbit hole, what else might be there buried in the medical literature? I made it my life's mission to find out. That's why I went to medical school in the first place and why I started NutritionFacts.org. So, like heart disease, might there already be a cure for obesity? That's what I intended to uncover. Here's the problem. I hate diet books. Uh, furthermore, I hate diet books that purport to hate diet books, yet relish in all the same absurdities. This book is for those who want facts, not filler fantasy or fluff. If you want testimonials, and before and after pictures, you have come to the wrong place. Uh, you don't need anecdotes when you have evidence. Harvard Sociologist of Science uh, calls these arguments by anecdotes in diet books a, a deliberate attempt at credibility engineering. When you don't have the science to back you up, all you have are success stories. I'm not interested in Offering dueling anecdotes, nor am I interested in dietary dogma, beliefs, or opinions. What I am interested in is the science. When it comes to making life and death decisions that concern something as important as your own health and that of your family, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one question. What does the best available balance of evidence say right now? That's what I've tried to encapsulate in this book. Often, diet books deal in pseudoscientific twaddle, swaddled in the trappings of science. But how is the untrained reader supposed to know the difference between the two and decide among the competing claims? It's no wonder people tend to flock to their respective gurus to have their minds made up for them. However, no one is born with this knowledge, and you have a right to demand to know where diet book authors got the information they're trying to sell you so you can check the credibility of the source and confirm its veracity. That's why I prefer presenting the science in video format on my website where I can show the original data and link to downloads of all the primary sources. And here in this book, I've tried to cite each substantive statement of fact. My goal was to create the oxymoron in evidence-based diet book. Caveat Eater. A quote from the White House Conference on Food, Nutrition, and Health, 